Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Atuhebe, for your time here on ENC. Now, firstly, um, nine out of ten uh, of Africa's countries not uh, rolling out vaccines as adequately as we expected. September is in about two months or three months' time. How many, really, uh, jabs do we need here in our continent to be able to reach the target by September? Oh, thank you very much. So from our projections, given the 1.3 billion African population, we're looking at an extra 225 million jabs to be able to reach the 10 percent mark for each country by September 2021, but also 780 million jabs to be able to reach the 30 percent ambitious mark uh, target that uh, that that uh, WHO has said, the World Health Assembly really, which is uh, really the whole world coming together, has set. But with the current vaccine and supply rollout remaining constant, uh, WHO projections target that only seven countries in Africa will be able to achieve this. Mm. Okay, that's quite concerning, especially when you look at, uh, I, don't, I wonder what the uh, WHO's reaction is to the G7 leaders who are, um, you know, willing to give uh, countries or continents such as ours some of their jabs, although, um, you know, I read somewhere that it's not enough because it would only be about 11 billion. What's your reaction to the G7, the, the world's seven largest economies, uh, saying that they'll, they'll want to donate? The recent G7 pledge is really to share, to share their doses. Notably, the United States and the UK are an important step forward for us in Africa. And this comes as it, at a time when we see other uh, richer nations like France make the tangible deliveries to Africa via the COVAX facility. And while this is a good start, as I mentioned, Africa needs an additional right now 225 million doses. These doses are being made well to the COVAX facility, which is right now the easiest and most straightforward way of, uh, of donating vaccines because we know that this, this facility is equitably supplying these doses. But will we be able to get enough for 225 million Africans by September 20, 2021? Maybe not. So we need more and more uh, richer countries to donate more doses because they do have the surplus doses. And if they do, much as they are donating, by the way, this, we need it to be materialized. It is only France mm -hmm. so far that has been able to send out doses, and New Zealand, to send out doses through the COVAX facility to Africa. Mm -hmm. We have seen Denmark, for example, also send doses directly to, to Kenya, but we do need these doses to come out of words and become material doses. And again, we need more countries to mm. pledge more doses. So, so far it's talk, but uh, not, not really much action that we're seeing uh, from the pledging from these countries. But also, uh, just a question about what the solution would be then. I mean, if you look at it, there's still that uh, debate around uh, patency rights with these vaccines. Yes, so... In the immediate term, given what we are facing right now and that most of the vaccine, almost 90% of the vaccine we have on the continent is from the AstraZeneca, from the Serum Institute of India. In, and right now we are not getting any doses. In the immediate term, the easiest way and fastest way out of Africa is these donations from wealthier countries. But also, much as these are important steps in the right direction, in the longer term, we need to scale up manufacturing mm. of vaccines in Africa. This is a conversation that started years ago, but then months ago, the COVID pandemic has shown us that Africa needs to pull up its socks. And these discussions have started to be able to have at least five hubs on the African continent that can produce vaccines. This does not take one year. This does not take 50, 10 or five months. This is something that takes a lot of time. It's a technical now, even when patents are lifted. That is not enough. We need the equipment, we need the technical know-how, which is most important. We have very good scientists in Africa, and they can do this, but we need the training. So there's a lot that still needs to go on, but it is lifting the patents, calling for lifting of patents is one of the steps in the right direction. Mm. So what do you think is the problem then, ma'am, with regards to Africa um, creating its own vaccines? Like you're saying, it's been a debate for quite a long time before COVID-19 landed on our shores. So why is it that we are still relying on the international world to help us? It is basically political commitment. The, uh, these heads of state, states do meet in uh, 2015, 
2016, the heads of state met in the African Union and signed the, what we call the Addis Ababa Declaration on Immunization and committed to research and development. And this was one of the first steps that in immunization that was to take place to, to, in order for Africa to start its own manufacturing. So far, Africa's province can manufacture vaccines. Senegal has been manufacturing yellow fever vaccines since 2009. So it is possible. But the commitment of funds, it is a huge, huge, huge investment that countries need to put together. That is why we see richer countries decide to vaccinate even their younger populations because the nations have invested so much in this manufacture of these vaccines. So African, the African leadership needs extra, extraordinary commitment. We are there, Africa City is there, WHO is there, UNICEF is there, we are there to support them. But the African leaders, first of all, must commit financially and everything that they have and decide this is a very high priority and we have no better time. This pandemic has shown us we must do this now. Mm. So it's political will. Thank you very much. That was, of course, uh, Fiona Atuhebwe. Thank you very much for your time.